ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد then to continue with Riyadh al-Salihin of Imam Nawawi rahimahullah and again, apologies for the late start. Then, with regard to the Riyadh al-Salihin, we reach chapter 218 in Kitab al-Fadail, chapter 218, Bab al-Jood, wa fi'l al-ma'arufi wal ikthari min al-khayri fi shahr Ramadana wa ziyadati min thalika fi al-ashr al-awakhiri minhu. The chapter of generosity and performing good deeds and being plentiful upon good in the month of Ramadan and increasing in that in the last ten nights of it. And in this chapter, Imam Nawawi Rahimahullah, he brings two hadith, the first of them hadith 1230. <laughs> فيدارسه فيدارسه القرآن فلا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم حين يلقاه جبريل أجود بالخير من الريح المرسلة متفق عليه. And from Ibn Abbas رضي الله عنهما who said Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم was the most generous of the people. And he would be most generous in Ramadan when Jibreel would meet him. And Jibreel would meet him in every night of Ramadan. And they would revise the Quran. So therefore Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when Jibreel would meet him, would be more generous upon good than a wind sent forth, agreed upon. As for who reports this hadith, then the hadith is just as Imam Nawawi, rahimahullah, said, indeed agreed upon, reported both by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. You'll find it in the Sahih of Al-Bukhari in five places. Firstly, in Kitab Bad ul Wahi, Kitab Bad ul Wahi, the book of the beginning of Revelation, chapter 5, hadith number 6, right at the start of the Sahih, hadith number 6. Also reported by Imam al Bukhari in Kitab al Sawm, the book of fasting, chapter 7, the most generous that the Prophet would be would be in Ramadan. And the wording there, is that he would be ajwadun nasi bil khair. He would be the most generous of people upon good, upon khair. Hadith number 1902. 1902. Also reported by Imam al Bukhari in the book Bad ul Khalq, Kitab Bad ul Khalq, the book of the beginning of the creation. Chapter 6, a mention of the angels. Salawatullahi alayhim. Hadith number 3220. I'm reported by Imam al Bukhari also in Kitab al Munaqib, the Book of Virtues, chapter 23, the description of the Prophet. Hadith 3554, 3554. And reported by Imam al Bukhari in Kitab Fadail al Quran, the Book of the Virtues of the Quran, chapter 7, 
that Jibreel used to have the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam revise the Qur'an with him. Hadith number 4997, 4997. And reported by Imam Muslim in his Sahih in Kitab al-Fadha'il, the Book of Virtues. Hadith 3208. And from the compilers of the Sunan, then it's reported by Imam al-Tirmidhi, uh, Imam al-Tirmidhi but not in his Sunan. He doesn't bring it in his Sunan, rather he brings it in his separate book, as shimail al muhammadiyah his book of characteristics of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as shimail al muhammadiyah Chapter 48, what occurs with regard to the characteristics of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And reported by Imam al-Nasai in his Sunan, in Kitab al-Siyam, the Book of Fasting, Chapter 2, doing good and being generous in the month of Ramadan. Hadith 2095. And also reported by others, besides reported by Imam Ahmad, reported by Imam al-Bukhari in his book, his separate book, Al-Adab al-Mufrad, his book of manners and behavior, Al-Adab al-Mufrad, chapter 138, having fine character when they have attained knowledge and understanding of the religion. Hadith number 292. And also reported by Imam al-Bayhaqi in his Sunan and in his book Shu'ab al-Iman and reported by Ibn Khuzayma, Ibn Hibban and Imam al baghawi in Sharh al-Sunnah. As for some of the phrases in the Hadith to make a brief, a brief mention of, then firstly, the saying of the companion Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أجود الناس that Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم he was the most generous of mankind and in and Rasul al-Bukhari and Muslim أجود الناس بالخير that he was the most generous of the people upon good, upon khair and with regard to this phrase the explainer of Mishkat al-Masabih Sheikh Ubaidullah al Mubarak Furi said, and his explanation being Mir'at al Mafatih, Sheikh Ubaidullah al Mubarak Furi said, Bil Khair, he was most generous of the people upon Khair. He said, explaining what is meant by Al Khair, good, he said, Ismun Jami' li kulli ma yun tafa'u bihi. Al Khair, good is a comprehensive term covering everything from which benefit can be derived. Meaning, Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself, without looking at his honorable times and honorable conditions, he would be the most ardent of people in generosity, doing every good from the good relating to this world and to the hereafter. For Allah and for Allah's sake. With regard to spreading knowledge and wealth and exerting his own person to make the religion manifest and to bring about the guidance of the servants and to bring benefit to them by every means and by carrying out their needs and carrying their burdens. As for the phrase فَيُدَارِسُهُ that Jibreel السلام, used to come to Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa every night in Ramadan فَيُدَارِسُهُ Quran and revise with him the Quran then Al Hafidh ibn Hajar said in his explanation of Al Bukhari Fatul Bari, he said, It is said that the wisdom, I mean, he is talking about the point that Allah's Messenger وسلم, would be most generous of all, he would be the most generous of the people, and the most generous that he would ever be would be at this time when Jibreel came and revised the Quran with him in Ramadan. So he mentioned some points of wisdom in that regard. He said, Al Hafidh ibn Hajar, it is said, the wisdom in that is that 
revising the Qur'an, renewed and increased for him ghina nafs ghina nafs self-contentment or richness literally richness of his of his soul so this revision of the quran increased renewed and increased for him ghina nafs self-contentment richness of the soul then he said and al ghina feeling rich and contented is a reason for generosity it's a reason or means to generosity and al jud generosity in the legislation is i'ta ma yanbaghi liman yanbaghi generosity al jud in the islamic legislation is to give whatever it is befitting to give to whomever it is befitting it should be given to that's the comprehensive definition of al jud generosity giving whatever it is befitting should be given to whomever it is befitting it should be given to he said and this is more general than sadaqah than charity more extensive and generous and general than charity then he mentions a further point he said and also ramadan is a season for all good things because the favors of Allah upon the servants in it are increased over and above other times they are increased over and above other times so therefore the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he used to prefer following the way laid down by Allah with regard to his servants I mean, therefore, he would also be more generous in that month. Then he concluded, and Hafiz concluded by saying, So by combination of what has been mentioned with regard to the time, and with regard to what he came down with, and with regard to the one who came down, and with regard to the revision, on account of this, extra generosity came about. And Allah the Most High knows best. As for the phrase Fala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Hayna Yalqahu Jibreel So Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Then with regard to this Fa Fa La Rasulullah Al Hafid ibn Hajar said Al Fa Al Fa Ulis Sababiya This Fa here that occurs Fa La Rasulullah Fa He said is a Fa that mentions the reason I mean, on account of this what's been mentioned here that's why the generosity came about as for the phrase that he was more generous min al he was more generous than a wind let loose or a wind sent forth then al hafiz ibn hajar said in fact al-bari al mursala means al mutlaqa meaning let loose then a wind that's loosed I mean, whoosh, uh, a loose a, a wind blowing meaning that in the speed of his generosity he was quicker than a wind and he used the term a wind which had been let loose as an indication of its blowing continuously with mercy and also the generality of its benefit its benefit was universal just as a wind which is blowing spreads over everything which it blows upon also on this phrase that he was more generous than a wind sent forth and also with regard to the three phrases that Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam first of all that he was the most generous of mankind secondly that the most generous that he ever was was in the month of Ramadan and then thirdly that he was more generous at that time than a wind sent forth then Al-Imam Badruddin Al-Aini made a point in his explanation of Al-Bukhari Umdat Al-Qari he said 
by the by the first sentence he indicated that he sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the most generous one of all of mankind unrestrictedly and by the second one he indicated that his generosity in ramadan would be even greater than his generosity at other times and with the third one he indicated that his generosity in how universal it, its benefit was and in how quickly it was given was just like a wind let loose as for the points of benefit that can be taken from the hadith then amongst them are the following nine, nine points of benefit firstly that which Imam al-Nawawi said in his explanation of Muslim that this hadith shows the greatness of the generosity of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Secondly, and points number two all the way to number seven are all from the same source, from Imam Badr al-Din al-Aini in Umdat al-Qari, his explanation of al-Bukhari, Umdat al-Qari. So the first of these points here, the second point of benefit, Badr al-Din al-Aini said, now the, the hadith shows an encouragement upon generosity, al-jud, and upon giving at all times, and upon increasing upon it in Ramadan, and when meeting righteous people. Third point, third point of benefit, again from Imam Badr al-Din al-Aini, he said, that this hadith shows visiting righteous people and people of virtue and sitting with them and paying them repeated visits and doing, doing so continuously as long as the one who is visited does not dislike that. As for the fourth point of benefit, and again, Badr al-Din al-Aini, he said that the hadith shows the recommendation of seeking to recite the Qur'an plentifully in Ramadan. And the fifth point of benefit, again, but Imam Badr al-Din al-Aini, he said, it shows the recommendation of studying the, Qur the Qur'an together. And other than it, from Islamic branches of knowledge. The sixth point of benefit that Badr al-Din al-Aini brings is that this hadith shows that there is no harm, a point we've had a, a number of times, he said that there is no harm in, in it being said Ramadan without using the word shahr, and just saying that Ramadan without saying the month of Ramadan in the correct saying. I mean, the point he made again, that's, even though some of the people of knowledge they held it's disliked if to just say Ramadan, you're supposed to say the month of Ramadan, but this is not correct. So he said there's no harm in saying Ramadan without having to say the month in the correct saying. The seventh point of benefit, also from Badr, Badr al-Din al-Aini, is that this hadith shows that recitation of the Qur'an is more excellent than tasbih and saying subhanallah and all the rest of the adhkar and all the rest of the words of dhikr reciting the Qur'an is better than that. He said, since if dhikr, words of remembrance, were more excellent, or if they were equal, then they would have carried that out throughout the time. The two of them, I mean the Prophet wasallam and Jibreel together, if that were more excellent, or if that were equal, they would have carried that out instead, all of the time or at least part of the time especially when the two of them met repeatedly then he made a point Al-Aini, he said so if you say but what was meant by it was just perfection of what had been memorized then I say that memorization had already occurred 
and an increase in it could have been attained with only a part of these sittings. I mean, if someone says it wasn't for, it's not a matter necessarily that the recitation is better, but it was, it was needed there for the Prophet ﷺ to memorize it. Then he said that already happened. The Prophet had already memorized it. So if it's said, if it, even if it's said, maybe to increase and perfect his memory, that's why it was. And he said that could have come about by just a part, not necessarily every single night of Ramadan. As for the eighth and ninth point of benefit, then they're, they're both taken from another explanation of Bukhari, from the explanation of Ibn Battal. So the eighth point of benefit, Ibn Battal said, it contains a proof that al Jalis al Salih, that a righteous sitting companion, benefit can be taken from sitting with him. And the ninth and last point of benefit, Ibn Battal said, Ramadan was specified for that because Allah the Most High sent down the Qur'an in it, to, down to the lowest heaven. And also it was done so that his nation should follow him upon that in every month of Ramadan. So that they are plentiful in it, in recitation of the Qur'an. So that therefore there is gather, gathered for them the virtue of fasting and of hearing the recitation and of reciting the Qur'an and of standing in prayer, in standing in the night prayer. So that they gather all of these virtuous deeds together. As for the second hadith of the chapter, hadith 1231, وعن عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا دخل العشر أحيا الليل وأيقظ أهله وشد المئزر متفق عليه. And from Aisha رضي الله عنها that she said when the last Ten began. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would stay awake in worship during the night and he would waken his family and he would tie his waist he would tie his waist wrapper, his izar tightly, agreed upon. As for who reports this hadith, then again, the hadith is just as Imam Nawi, rahimahullah, said, indeed, agreed upon, reported both by al-Bukhari and Muslim. And as a matter of fact, we had this hadith twice before, once a very long time ago, we had it as, or it occurs in this, right, the version of Sheikh al-Albani, as hadith, had, hadith number 101, and we had it in the version we had at that time, as hadith number 99, and it was in chapter 11, al chapter of al-Mujahada, Striving with oneself. We also had it much more recently, not too long ago at all, in chapter 214. The chapter of Fadl Qiyami Laylatul Qadr. The virtue of standing in prayer during Layl Laylatul Qadr. Hadith number 1201. So anyone who has notes from that, from that point, then what follows is just about the same. So as a reminder though, we'll mention it insha'Allah. And as for who reports the hadith, then the hadith is reported by Al-Bukhari in his Sahih, and you'll find it there in Kitab Salat al Taraweeh, the book of the Taraweeh prayer, chapter 5, action in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, hadith 2024, 2024. And reported by Muslim in the book of Itikaf, hadith 1174, I'm reported by Abu Dawood in Kitab al Salat, chapter 318, with regard to standing in the night prayer in the month of Ramadan, hadith 1376. I'm reported by Imam al Nasa'i in Kitab Qiyam al Layl, the book of the standing in prayer during the night, chapter 17, the, dif the different reports from Aisha with regard to staying awake during the night. Hadith 1639. 
And finally, from the narrates of the Sunan, reported by Ibn Umarja in Kitab al-Siyam, the Book of Fasting, chapter 57, with regard to the virtue of the last ten, the last ten of the month of Ramadan, Hadith 1768. And reported by others besides, reported by Imam Ahmad, Ibn Khuzayma, Ibn Hibban in three places, Abu Awana, and also by Imam al-Baghwi in Sharh al-Sunnah. As for some of the phrases to make a mention of again, then firstly, the phrase, إِذَا دَخَلَ الْأَشْرُ Literally, when the ten entered, or when the ten began, then Al-Hafidh ibn Hajjah said in Fatul Bari, أَيْ akhir," Meaning, the last ten. As occurs in some of the narrations, such as the narration of Ibn Khuzayma and Ibn Hibban, where it directly mentions the last ten of Ramadan. As for the phrase that Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when the last ten began, Ahya layl Literally, he would give life to the night. Meaning that he would remain awake for worship during the night. So with regard to this phrase, Ahya layl that he would stay awake, literally he would give life to the night. Then Imam al said in his explanation of Muslim, Meaning, he would stay awake throughout all of it, devoting himself to prayer and other than it. Also on the same phrase, Ahi al-Layl, al-Hafidh ibn Hajjah said in Fatul Bari, meaning he would stay awake during it, staying awake, performing acts of obedience, and he would keep himself awake during it literally keep himself alive meaning he would keep himself awake during it he said because sleep is the brother of death also on the same point Shaykh Ubaidullah al-Mubarak for he said in Mir Mir'at al-Mafatih his explanation of Mishkat meaning by standing in prayer and by re reciting the Qur'an, and by dhikr, words of making, uh, making remembrance of Allah. So it is as if a time period which is free of worship is like a dead person. But when it is, ac when it is filled with ibadah, with worship, it becomes hay. That time becomes as if it is alive. And he also said, Shaykh Ubaidullah Mubarak Fori, he said, meaning he would spend all of it in remaining awake, in prayer, and other than it. Or that he would spend the greater part of it awake. Because of her saying, meaning the saying of Aisha radiallahu anha in the Sahih, مَا عَلِمْتُهُ قَامَ لَيْلَةً حَتَّى أَصْبَحْ I mean, the second possible explanation is he didn't spend the whole night awake, but he would spend most of it awake. He said, because of her, the saying of the mother of the believers, Aisha radiallahu anha and the Sahih, I never knew him to stand in prayer for a whole night until the morning. I mean, she, uh, the nation of Aisha radiallahu anha, that she never knew about Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He spent a whole, an entire night ever in worship right until the dawn. On this same point, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Ali ibn Adam al Athiopi, he said in his explanation of the Sunan of al Nasai, al Zakhirat al Uqba, he said, he commented upon Imam al Nasai's chapter heading, that Imam al Nasai brought the chapter heading, the different reports that occur from Aisha. So he said, what's apparent is that the author, Imam al, Imam al Nasai, rahimahullah ta'ala, he held that it means that he spent the whole of the night awake in worship. So therefore, he brought in the chapter heading the different reports from Aisha with regard to staying awake in the night. Then he said, however, what is apparent to me, as we have already mentioned a short while ago, is that it is to be taken to mean that he actually stayed awake for Mu'dham al-Layl, for most of the night. So then, there would be no disagreement between the ahadith 
and Allah the Most High knows best. I mean, if we take the wording, literally the wording here is Ahi al layl he stayed awake for the night. So what's well, apparent from it, it means, it means the whole night. However, if we take that it meant meaning most of the night, he was awake for the night, meaning most of the night, then there will be no contradiction between that report and between the other narration from Aisha radiallahu anha that she never knew Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa to stand in, pr- in prayer for a whole night until the dawn. Wallahu a'lam. As for the phrase, وَأَيْقَضَ ahlahu, And he would wake up his family, then Al-Hafidh ibn Hajar said in Fatwa Bari, meaning for the prayer, for the salah. As for the phrase, وَشَدَّ الْمِعَزَرِ Literally, and he tightened his waist wrapper, his izar. Then Imam Siddiq Hassan Khan said in his explanation of Bukhari, Aun al-Bari, this is a wording which means, literally he, he tied his waist wrapper, he tied his izar tightly. It's a way of saying that he strove hard in worship. I mean, that's, it can be used to mean that. I mean, as a, a, a turn of phrase to mean he strove hard in worship. He said, but what is actually correct is that the meaning here is that he kept away from the women. And this was the explanation given by the Salaf and by the early Imams. And it was clearly stated by Abdul Razak from al from Thawri, I mean from the Imam Sufyan al Thawri, that he said that's the meaning. But it is still possible that it means his keeping away from the women and also his exerting. Together. I mean, it can mean both things. On this phrase also, Imam, or rather, al- on the same phrase, al Hafiz ibn al Mulaqin said in his explanation of al Bukhari at Tawdih, he said, again, he mentioned the saying of Imam Sufyan al Thawri, he said, Sufyan al Thawri said, the meaning of Shadd al Mi'zar, he tightened his waist wrapper, here, is he didn't draw near to the women. And also, finally, on this phrase, Al Hafid ibn Hajar said in Fatul Bari, and likewise, Shaykh Al Albani said in his abridgment of the Sahih of Al Bukhari, A itazal an nisa. I mean, what's meant here is it ties way from, meaning he would keep away from the women, meaning he'd keep away from his wives. As for the points of benefit to be taken from the hadith, then amongst them are the following five points of benefit. Firstly, <coughs> that which Imam al Nawi said in his explanation of Sahih Muslim, that this hadith shows that it is recommended that acts of worship, ibadah, are increased in the last 10 of Ramadan. On the same point, the same first point of benefit, Imam Badruddin al-Aini said, but this time in his explanation of Abu Dawood, he said, it is said that he used to strive extra in the last 10 because of two reasons. One of them was his hoping to find Laylatul Qadr, the night of decree. And the second reason is that this was the end of the action. It means this is the end, the last part of the month of fasting. He said because it was the end of the action. And it is befitting that a person should be eager upon making the conclusion good in any, in any act of worship being especially careful to make the conclusion of it good finally on the, uh, this same first point of benefit uh, Al-Hafidh Ibn al mulaqqin said in at tawdih his explanation of Bukhari he said because it is possible that the month was going to be naqis, deficient lit- literally meaning short mean 29 days or it could be complete, I mean it could be 30 days. So therefore, he, if he stayed awake in worship throughout all of the 10 nights, not missing any of them, for this reason, whether it was going to be odd or even. And that's connected to a point that we had briefly before, that some of the people of knowledge, they say that Laylatul Qadr, it will be on the odd nights, but however, what are the odd nights? D- do they count from the start? Or do they count from the end of the month? And if they count from the, the end of the month, 
it will it will matter whether it's a month of 29 or a 30 that they will they will vary so he the point that al hafiz ibn al-muqin is said why did the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam why didn't, didn't he just seek out the odd nights why did he do all of the last 10 for this reason just in case the month was 30 days and not 29 wallahu alam as for the second point of benefit then imam al nawawi said in his ex explanation of muslim it shows the recommendation of spending its nights in worship in acts of worship or rather he said it shows the recommendation of staying awake during its nights for acts of worship and as for the saying of our companions mean the shafi'i scholars it is disliked to stand in prayer for the whole night then what this means is to do that continuously but they do not say that it's disliked to do it for one night or just two nights or for the ten nights I mean to do it throughout the time, the whole, throughout the year as for the third point of benefit then again Shaykh Muhammad ibn Ali al ibn Adam al Ethiopi said in his explanation of the Sunan of al Nasa'i al Zakhirat al Uqba he said that it shows the virtue of the last ten nights of Ramadan over any other nights so the last the virtue of the last ten nights of Ramadan over other nights. As for the fourth point of benefit, then Al Qurtubi said in his explanation of Muslim Al Mufhim, it shows an encouragement. Or it shows encouraging one's family upon getting up for optional prayers. And urging them to acquire good and reward. And the fifth and last point of benefit is something which Sheikh bin Baz, Sheikh Abdul Aziz ibn, ibn Baz, Rahimullah said, as occurs in these notes to the Sahih of Al Bukhari, that this shows his sallallahu alayhi wa exerting himself greatly by his deeds and by his sayings. Even though he sallallahu alayhi wa was the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa and even though his earlier and his later sins had all been forgiven. However, people of wisdom, they increase in activeness and in performing deeds. Along with what they are already upon from tremendous good. And they don't just sit back upon what they've already got from good. If they're people of wisdom, they increase upon in activeness and, and deeds even if they're upon tremendous good already. And finally, with regard to the explanation of Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al Thaymeen, rahimahullah, then he said, the author, rahimahullah, rahimahullah ta'ala, said in the chapter of generosity in the month of Ramadan, he said, al-jood, generosity, huwa badlul mahboob min malin aw amal. Al-jood, generosity, it means expending that which is beloved, from wealth or actions. So a person can be generous with his wealth such that he gives it to a poor person and he gives gifts to a rich person and he assists the one who is in need. And he should be generous likewise with his actions so that he helps a person upon his affairs with regard to his car, with regard to his shop, with regard to his house. So al-jood, generosity, is to expend one's wealth and one's actions. And there may enter into that sometimes exerting oneself with regard to one's position, one's jah, one's position, one's status such that he intercedes for someone or mediates for him to bring some benefit for him or to repel some harm or the like of that. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he was just as Anas ibn, ibn Malik radiallahu anhu said Ajwadun Nas the most generous of the people most generous of mankind 
with his wealth and his body and his knowledge and his call and his advice. And with everything that could benefit the creation. And he was the most generous that he would ever be in Ramadan. Because Ramadan is the month of generosity. So Allah is generous in it to the servants. And those servants who are granted success, they are generous to their brothers. And Allah the Most High is Jawadun. He is generous. He loves generosity. And the Prophet wasallam, Jibreel used to descend upon him in Ramadan every night for him to recite, for him to revise the Quran with him, to make it firm in his heart. And so that he could attain the reward of revising it with Jibreel, between himself and Jibreel. And Jibreel alayhi salatu wassalam, he would descend, but however in a manner which we do not know, because he is an angel from the angels, and the angels are not seen, unless Allah the Mighty Majestic wishes. He said Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when Jibreel would re revise the Quran with him, he would then be the most generous upon good. More generous than a wind set loose, meaning that he, he would hasten to good, alayhi salatu wassalam, and be generous with it to such, such an extent that he would be quicker than a wind set loose, meaning that which has been set loose by Allah, the mighty and majestic, such that it is quick and strong, quick and blowing strongly. Yet despite this, the Messenger وسلم, would be more generous upon good than this wind in the month of Ramadan. He said, then the author mentioned the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha that the Prophet وسلم, when the last 10 of Ramadan began, he would stay awake in worship. He said, meaning he would stay awake uh, with dhikr upon remembrance of Allah and upon recitation of the Quran and upon prayer and upon worship and he'd wake his family and he would tie his waist wrapper he would wake them so that they could pray and he would tie his waist wrapper meaning he would ready himself completely for action because tying the waist wrapper means that a person is preparing himself to do some work and strengthening himself for it. Or it is also said that the meaning of he would tie his waist wrapper is that he would keep away from the women, I mean from his wives, alayhi salatu wassalam, because he would devote himself to worship then. He would devote himself to worship. And both of these are correct. I mean, both these meanings are correct. He said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would devote himself solely to worship in the last 10 of Ramadan and he would stay awake he would stay awake for the whole of the night being upon obedience to Allah so this is a case of being generous with his own person however it is generosity with regard to the rights of Allah the mighty and majestic and Allah he is the one who bestows favor upon whomever he wishes from his servants. So if he, be, if he favors you with action, then it is he who has bestowed the favor. I mean, if you do some righteous deed, then the favor is not as if you've done any favor for Allah. If, Allah, if you do a, a righteous deed, it's Allah who has favored you with that deed. So he said, so it is Allah, it is he, Allah, who favors whomever he wishes from his servants. So if he favors you with an action, with a deed, then the minna is for him. He is the one who has, has bestowed favor. He has bestowed favor upon you, firstly, by granting you that action. 
and then he has also favored you secondly by accepting it wa iyyakum lima yuhibbuhu wa yarda amin may allah guide us and guide you to that which he loves and is pleased with amin walhamdulillah sallallahu ala muhammad and that's the end of this particular chapter subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik